been asked what is the best way of making an object release its energy to the wearer or to the location it is at. And here we have to discern a little bit. So we're not talking about an object which is just merely a material object. It has to be an object which already has an energetic power. And there are roughly three types of power. So an object can have an intrinsic power, which is uh, because of its uh, shape or because of its material. Um, it has a certain energy or it is able to attract a certain energy. An object can also be charged, which means that a certain energy has been deposited in the object and just like a battery it holds the charge and it can release it again. Or the object may be a blessed object which is in a way acting like an antenna. So it holds a certain charge and it is in a way also a charge which is continually renewed. So it can act more or less like a river. So if we have an object which has a charge or a certain energy because of its material or because of its shape, then releasing the energy is in a way uh, just a matter of getting things to interact with the object. So the object is more or less like, uh, you could say, like a stone in a river. So it's by being what it is, it's in a way transforms everything which comes into contact with it. So it is a little, acts a little bit like a, like a catalyst. So such an object is best if it is placed on a place where there is a lot of energetic contact. So to place it um, in front of mirrors, uh, windows, doorways, um, or also um, on the body, uh, or at other places where there is a lot of energetic flow, so usually places where people spend a lot of time and having an object there can really help to harmonize the energy so that all the energy in the space becomes very similar to the energy patterns of the object. And it is generally best to create an object which has a harmonizing effect, so which is either of copper or messing or silver or gold because these energies tend to be very harmonious, very beneficial for, uh, for human beings and other living beings. Um, so having these objects around and especially in places where there is a lot of energy flow already creates quite a nice effect. If you have an object which has been charged, um, then you generally want to place it somewhere where the charge can be accessed when it is needed. So charged objects usually decharge themselves through a person. So for instance, an object might be charged with a protective energy or healing energy. And by wearing it over time, usually a few weeks, sometimes a few months, this charge will seep out of the object into the person who is wearing it or into the person who is using it. It is also possible to create a charge in a certain room, in a certain space, so that everybody who goes into the room or spends some time there is blessed by it. There are also places which naturally contain such a charge, places in nature which have a strong healing effect. In such a case, it is very important mainly that uh, the person who is around the object which holds the charge is open to it. So if the person is relaxed then in general the person is quite open. If the person is very stressed or agitated or fearful uh, then they won't be able to use the energy which is coming off the object. So for instance in a protective amulet, um, by having a protective amulet I should feel more relaxed, more safe, not as anxious because if I would still feel very afraid or anxious, then actually the protective amulet could not work for me because I could not access its energy. So it is 
really much more about the person's own openness, their own ability to attune to the energy, uh, which makes a charged object more uh, useful. If we look at blessed objects, then it becomes very much a matter of permission. So a blessed object is in a way representing a higher power, a higher energy. But these higher powers or energies they tend not to just roam around and do whatever they like. Uh, they respect the hierarchy of things. Um, they tend not to reach out or go out of their way to do things. They wait until people, in a way, open themselves up to them uh, or touch them or say a certain prayer or do something else to unlock the power. So every religion or tradition has its own ways or methods or rituals or symbols to show that you're submitting yourself to their guidance and are asking for their blessings. So um, saying a certain prayer or doing something else to communicate to the power which is behind the blessed object that you would like to utilize it and that's its power can act upon you is how such an object would be, would be activated, whether it is worn or whether it is in a certain location. For the objects which you want to use to, in a way, bless a room, it is very nice if they're, in a way, in a place where they can have enough of an effect. So depending on the object, they have kind of a range or an aura of how far their energies will go. Uh, typically of uh, a small um, yeah, charged or blessed object it is about 60 centimeters so it is not all that far. Um, usually these objects are also relatively small and they're more also meant for personal use. It is possible to have like bigger stones or crystals or uh, statues uh, which can be used for blessing an entire space, an entire room. But these objects will also really need a source of power to do that. So usually they require some uh, form of accelerator to get the process going to allow their energy to spread into the space more easily. Usually in the form of incense, it can also be in the form of uh, flowers, where in a way, by putting the flowers or the incense close to the holy object, the blessed object, the blessed object will in a way transform the incense or the flowers and then the fragrance coming off the incense of the flowers will spread the energy throughout the room or throughout the house. So these are methods where you can use an object which is limited in its aura and still have the energy to move all through the house. Sometimes it's also possible to create an object which is strong enough or more powerful so it can actually encompass the whole room. But this is usually quite tricky. Um, such greater powers are usually interested also in helping not just one person but helping a lot of people. So if you have a statue like this in a place where you give teachings or you perform healings or where you meet with groups that will usually work out but if you are just having it on your desk and you want to use it for yourself it tends not to get enough blessings enough strength or power to really bless the entire room or let alone your entire house um, because it would be a waste of energy a waste of power i do have to say that um, buddhistic objects tend to be more um, open or less restrictive uh, regarding use than other religious objects. Um, from the Buddhist perspective, whether you help one person or you help a thousand persons, um, one is not more important than the other. It is the very act of being merciful, of being helpful, which is important. So it doesn't matter who asks it of you, whether it is a worm, a cat or a thousand people. So. Buddhistic objects for blessing a space or blessing an area, they tend not to be as limited as that from other religions. 
Thank you for asking this uh, very interesting question and I hope many people will benefit.